Okay, so for today, uh, I'm going to remove my um, titanium uh, coated brow set and replace it with the, um, the red speed coated 64mm multi purpose red. Right, so basically, this is for multi purpose, right? So, this is actually the brow set from SSB Korea. Uh, I'm also going to co go through a quick uh, alignment. Uh, on this per set right uh, so but before we can do that uh, we have to clean up uh, all the coffee ground that is inside this uh, grinder right so let's take it out uh, always remember to unplug your power before you do that right so first of all I have to remove the dial the grind indicator And do remember that if you are unscrewing the collar to do the regular maintenance, right? If you happen to uh, damage the screw track, this will not be part of the warranty that's covered uh, by any of the uh, local dealer, right? Because this is actually due to your own um, misuse of the grinder. So this will not be part of the warranty cover. So when you unscrew or screw in the collar, please be very careful. Right, because I, I, I have so far encountered quite a few cases whereby when you screw in the collar, you didn't screw in properly and this actually damaged the screw thread and therefore most likely the body has to be replaced Worse, you may have to get a new grinder Right, so let's remove the top collar Right, we call this the collar Right, I'm not bothered by this font size right, whatsoever Right, remove this top Right, so you can see it's pretty clean. Right, of course inside there will be a bit of coffee ground. Right, so let's clean out everything before we install the new one. Right, and because I'm going to remove everything, right, and most of the time all these tiny spaces between the screw will have been filled up by the coffee ground, and that's perfectly normal. It's supposed to happen this way, right? But in order for me to unscrew the screw properly. Right, I have to make sure that all the coffee ground are being uh, removed. Otherwise, when uh, I will not be able to effectively unscrew this thing. So just get something like this. This is actually a plastic. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, toothpick. Right, just make sure you remove all the coffee ground as much as possible. Right before you actually unscrew this thing. Right, so this is only my personal uh, suggestion. Right, so this is normally what I do before I start to vacuum out everything and remove the the burr right with a screwdriver and because it's plastic and it won't damage anything to the metal All right so you can see there's quite a little bit of coffee ground that's stuck inside there of course you can use the uh, bamboo toothpick as well if you don't want to use plastic it's fine All right but this is curved so I find this particular useful in remo removing all the coffee ground that's stuck in between right so since I'm going to do a total cleanup right so uh, I'm going to remove the screw as well and uh, I'll try to restore it uh, as much as possible back to the original condition right so let's get my vacuum cleaner right uh, it's good to have this portable vacuum cleaner Oops, okay, so now you can see that it's uh, properly cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the spring, right? Uh, and number one thing you have to make sure is that this is what I call the sleeve that holds the spring, right? Again, I have to give a shout out to Jeffrey, right? He's one of the very first buyer who bought DF64 from me uh, in Singapore, right? He actually taught me that uh, in order for um, the, for the uh, grind setting, uh, a lot of you couldn't get a very large range for espresso and that's because your spring is not well set right you must make sure that the spring is flush at the bottom with the sleeve that holds the spring and make sure that you have to push all the way down so that it touches the 
uh, the, the bottom there, right? You can see that the bottom there is actually a lot of coffee ground and hence uh, when you do cleaning, uh, it's good that you remove all this, right? Before you install the new burr set, right? Right, if you can, just remove it, make sure there's no coffee ground stuck inside because we don't want to impede any uh, any of the ability for the spring to uh, to recover or to be get depressed. Right, so now all the spring has been removed. Okay, now let's remove the uh, titanium burr at the bottom. Right, so before you do any unscrewing, right, uh, it's good to hold the uh, central nut down right before you do any unscrewing. So I will usually just uh, un loosen the screw first, right? Uh, before I move, go on to remove uh, the entire screw. Uh, be careful when you um, touch the surrounding of the uh, body of the grinder because I think a lot of these corners are they are not polished so they can be very sharp at the corner so be careful when you touch with your bare hand at the corner here right so now the three screws has been removed right uh, I will usually use my two hand to lift the burr up right so you can see the underside has a bit of coffee ground there right, so now what you can do is you can get a brush right uh, just quickly brush it uh, okay you can remove your grinder right just brush it right so you can see that the the titanium right there's a bit of wearing here right but that's very normal Right, so sometimes you when you get your new uh, new grinder, right, you will see some scratches at the uh, at the side. That's because that's not because the burr side is damaged. Uh, probably the factory did some did try to do some alignment test for you, and you can see that there's a slight worn at the side. But this this is really nothing uh, serious because this is not the the the, the corner that the side here, whereby the flat region is not involved in the grinding itself right most of the grinding is done at the center around the corners and not at the side right all right so you can see there's a lot of coffee ground trap there so and uh if you look at the exit shoot shoot right not too sure you can see right you can see the shoot is actually a uh, pretty jam up right with quite a lot of coffee kick up at the corner right but this will can't really be helped right because we actually install the declumper right Okay, so right now I'm going to unturn this uh, and allow the coffee ground to drop out to the table. Right, uh, maybe I'll dust it first. Loosen all the coffee ground. down again be careful again don't cut yourself right so you can see it's more or less clean right most important is this part here when you want to uh, install your new burr set make sure that this part doesn't have any coffee ground that's stuck in between right the rest is fine right so before you do anything Make sure you remove the spring. Make sure that the spring is inserted all the way and flush at the bottom. All right, this is the first thing you should do. Uh, make sure the spring is free to move. All right, so make sure it's flush. Push down all the way. 
right a lot of time uh, when the grinder reaches you most of the time you know uh, the spring is set this way so you can see when you press down the sleeve will actually create a lot of resistance for the spring to move freely so you have to make sure that you the spring is the sleeve is flush at the bottom with the spring and touches at the bottom of the uh, the spot whereby the spring sits on right so make sure everything is tight and now we can install the burr right and for SSV burr usually you will come with an instruction right the instructions will tell you to season your burr with uh, oily beans right to say that it's good to season your burr okay let me see where Right, it says that SSP recommend 3 to 5 kg of coarse range coffee grinding as a seasoning period. Until the edges of the burr are fully covered with coffee oil, the grinding speed may be slower than the normal. Right, SSP recommend grind full city or French roasted beans for seasoning period. So you're supposed to use dark roasted beans when you do the seasoning, right? That's what the SSP recommends. Right, same thing, let me uh, screw it down. Right, do not tighten this because you want to do a little bit of adjustment before you finally tighten the screw down. Make sure that the screw is straight before you screw it in right make sure all the three screws are seated at the center of the the hole right Right, okay, that's the best we can do. So now I'm actually screwing it tight down. Okay, so the bottom burr has been installed. So now we'll proceed to install the top one. Right, same thing, we're going to clean up everything here. So let me just do a quick cleaning. Uh, these paint brush are perfect for this purpose, right? Right, so same thing, let's remove all the cake coffee that's kick up all inside all the crevices there. Right, this is where your brush will never be able to reach. You can try two brush. Right, but I'm not too sure whether two brush can actually remove this. Maybe uh, the material may be a bit too soft. Right, so same thing, let's remove. Right, you can see how much coffee ground is actually trapped underneath the burr. Okay, so now it's pretty okay, it's pretty clean. Right, let's put it back to the box.
right and let's install the top burr Right, same thing, uh, don't screw tight. Right, make sure that the three screws are mostly at the center. Then we can just screw it tight. So basically this is the SFC multi-purpose, right, which is supposed to be better if you are using lighter rows. So what I'm gonna do is uh, after installation, I'm gonna do a burr alignment very quickly. Right, then uh, I'm gonna do a uh, a test on the flavor of the coffee grinded fry as compared to the SFC multi-purpose versus the standard eater meal right okay so now I'm gonna do a burr alignment right so uh, it's good to have uh, three different color of marker right so as usual right you can see that my previous alignment has been done so I'll be using the same so red here and uh, I'll be putting here as red as well right um, purple on this side so this will be purple and this will be green right so this will be green color right so once I mark it out I'm gonna paint the external uh, the flatter part of the burr set with a water-based marker Um, okay, a lot of a lot of my um, viewer or my followers or subscribers ask me, uh, is the burr alignment really necessary? Right, of course. Um, I believe the grinder is good enough for you to grind, start grinding coffee, right out of the box. Right, but then uh, if I believe with a proper burr alignment, right, it's going to give you a better and more consistent grind size. Right, because the burr will be more uh, in parallel to each other right so I believe that will actually enhance uh, because of the more consistent grind size right uh, it's supposed to give you a uh, better taste right and also one thing if you align your burr properly uh, it will give you a slightly larger range right especially if you are dealing with espresso Right, so now all the external part has been uh, painted right so uh, I'm gonna do the first test right so I'm gonna align the red to the red and before you put the color back make sure you push the spring down so that is you know that it's free to move right and I'm gonna sit my grinder right onto the 10 degree tube base be careful the edges here is all very sharp okay so now it's properly seated right and uh, when you want to screw the collar in right this is also I've also learned this from my subscriber right here show me a guy who actually just press on the center and then just turn the collar aside right do not force the collar right press it down and then you turn the collar, right? Don't have to push on the collar. Right, and turn all the way until it cannot be turned further. Right, make sure the power is switched off, of course. Right, and use your thumb and try to turn. Of course, when it's tight, you will not be able to turn. Right, so you can feel that the uh, 
the center bar is free to spin Ah, can hear the bird touching each other. Okay, let's remove this. Right, this, this is now what we are trying to do now is actually to see whether the initial uh, alignment of the bird is done properly. So you can see that this is pretty bad. Right, uh, you can see that the top only has a little bit of okay. Let me see. In fact, the position that's wiped is only around this region, right? And the bottom, okay, I probably didn't close enough, right? So let's try that again, right? So let's screw this back again. Right, with the uh, multi-purpose because the flat the part at the side is actually not totally flat right so you can see that uh, all these are considered as uh, being wiped down right you can see that it's wiped down here is not white here is white right so you can see that it's totally wiped down except this region here right so this I can consider this as about 95% right so now if you check the top all these are wiped down already Right, it's wiped down. Right, this region is totally not wiped. So this is actually probably a very bad position. Right, so the next step will be simple is to rotate this 120 degrees and then we do the alignment again. Okay, so now I will proceed to do the second test because the first test at the bottom I have only achieved about 95 90 to 95 percent alignment, and the top, as you can see from here. Right, uh, it is pretty bad. I'm only achieve about probably um thirty percent to forty percent. So let me just refill the color. The bottom is pretty pretty much uh okay, right? Because I'm actually achieving about ninety five percent. Right, so now what happen, what's going to happen is just now the red color is aligning to the red mark so now I'll be turning uh, 120 degrees anti-clockwise uh, anti so now my green color marker is at my red color uh, marker at the 12 o'clock position right make sure all the springs are free to move right and now I can lock the top color Right again, make sure that you press down the center centerpiece. Ah, then you turn gently on the collar. Right, you should be able to bite onto the thread easily. Okay, so I, I this is locked. Right, this is free to move. Still can move a bit more. Still can move. Still can move. Okay, now I can hear the two birds touching each other. Okay. 
Okay, let's open up and see. Right, you can see that the bottom is 100% now. The top, right, is also 100%. So you can see with two uh, tries, I will be able to get uh, per 100% align, which means the initial position when the red is pointing to the red, it does not give me uh, give me a perfectly aligned uh, per position. But when I rotate it 120 degrees anti-clockwise, right, I'm able to achieve that. So which means my green color marking to the red color marking on the base position is my best position, right, which uh, which allows me to get 100% burr alignment because on the edge is all fully wiped off. The bottom is also 100% wipe off, right? So this will be my aligned burr position for these sets of SSP multi-purpose burr set. So now I'm going to lock in the top collar and I'm going to find the zero point. Right, and if you if you have been following my channel, right, most of the file that I've created for the DF64 has been shared freely, right? Uh, for own use only, right? So if you are printing this for yourself, you're not making a profit out of it, right? Please go ahead and try. Uh, and print out, and maybe you can feedback to me how well uh, it's working for you, right? So right now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to feel... I'm going to use my hand to feel the and rotate the bird at the center and I can feel that the two birds are rubbing against each other and this I know this is actually my zero point and uh, if you haven't downloaded this right you can actually download this for free right if you have a 3d printer you can print it for yourself and I know that this is actually my zero marking so I'm just going to push it down right you will get loose over time but don't worry because you will hardly touch this part Right, you don't have to be a perfectly tight position. If you get loose over time, it's all right. So now I can actually adjust this to point to my zero position. And now if I adjust my collar, right, I'll be able to tell at what grind setting I'm actually using. Right, so right now what's going to happen is I'm going to run a few rounds of coffee beans to erase all the red color um, uh, marking, which I've painted the burr on with the uh, uh, water-based marker, right? So I'll grind it to be around 15 at the espresso range. Right, even though this is actually the multi-purpose burst set, uh, but it can still grind for espresso. So let me get some coffee beans to grind it. Okay, so let's try to use my dosing cup, right? By the way, this is the uh, version three of the dosing, uh, version two of the dosing cup, right? And again, the files are freely shared already on Thing Inverse, right? So if you want to download, right, you can actually go and download and print for yourself, right? So um, the height has been increased, right? And the center hole, I I believe I increased to nineteen uh, mm instead of uh, eighteen. Right, so now uh, it should flush very well with the inner uh, side of the bellow. Right, you can see that there's no more gap. Right, so let's grind some beans. Oh, I forgot to switch on the power. Just give me a moment. Okay, so now the power is switched on. I'm just going to switch on and let you see the the bin situation here.
right these are really super fine it's definitely capable of pulling espresso shots right so this is only at a grind setting of 15 i think if i use this for espresso you probably choke uh, my powder filter right so i'm just going to grind again Right, so you can see that there's a very minimal popcorning, right? And the uh, I've already run uh, two rounds of uh, a grind setting of 15, and these are really very fine. All right, let me show you. You can see that these are super fine, right? It almost feel like powders, right? And the grind is actually very, very uniform, right? And uh, remember, I'm going to use this set uh, for. Uh, brewing filter coffee right uh, so uh, today's video is going to be showing you how i actually do the uh, uh, installation the cleaning of the uh, grinders plus the installation of the ssp burr multi-purpose burr set as well as the burr lineman done on done on the 10 degree tilted base and i think so far i've done quite a lot of uh, um, alignment and most of the alignment they have done can be completed in about two tries with uh, if i do the alignment on the 10 degree tube base right so i think um in my experience the 10 degree tube base actually improved my chance of me hitting the right my alignment faster than when i've done it on without a 10 degree tube stand right so today's video is going to be showing you uh, the installation the cleaning and of course my version 2 of my anti-popcorn device right so if you have not done download and try please go ahead and download and if you are uh, if you want to make a business out of the uh, my 3d design right please approach me and we can discuss about how i can actually allow, uh, give you the right to print uh, let's say if you are in other countries and your um my uh, there are someone who want to purchase in your country so please get in touch with me right um i will link my email address in the description down later so you can reach me if you want to print it for your for business right so if you want to make a profit of it right we can discuss about it because uh, i think i've already started doing this with a partner i think with two partners in malaysia so they're actually printing my all the modification uh using my models uh, my 3d models and uh, i think uh they are uh, we are we are arranging some sort of a royalty so that they can actually uh, pass some of the earnings back to me so that the, the money that i get from them uh, for selling my 3d models can actually be channeled through uh, the purchase of my new uh, machine which is actually the snap baker 2 and uh yep and in this video i also want to thank uh, i have actually one patron supporter now right uh, i would like to thank um um thank him right i will link in at the at the credit behind right he has actually contributed 30 dollars per month and i thank you very much on supporting me and um, I, I hope more of you can actually help me in achieving my goal Right, of getting the new snap baker too whereby i can actually do more of this modification in different materials such as wood uh, aluminium and things like that right so i think uh, that's all the video i have for you today and thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video which i'll be comparing the taste between the original itamail right on filter coffee versus the ssp multi-purpose brew and of course i'm also going to do a comparison with my manual grinder right uh, the three manual grinders I have, of course, the first one is Millwright, right? I'm also going to test on the Easy Presso, right? This is actually the K Pro, right? And lastly, of course, I'm also going to do a taste comparison with the Commandante against my two DF64 for filter coffee. So stay tuned for the update, uh, and stay safe, and I'll see you very soon. Remember to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and. Thank you for watching.